The key to wealth is through ownership. Like that's what, that's, that was one of the things that made it click because I studied the wealthy people. The key to building wealth is not how much you can work. You can't work your way to wealth. You gotta invest your way to And all wealthy people, black, white, Asian, Chinese, they own a whole bunch of shit. The people who aren't wealthy is because they don't own nothing. You only have your money sitting in cash. If your money is just sitting in cash, realistically, you're becoming poorer every day. I can afford any money manager I want, mm -hmm. and you are as knowledgeable as the money manager that I have. I'm very impressed with your ability to explain these concepts. There are certain people that are only gonna listen to you. They now have access to, I'm telling you, world-class information. Both the people do three things, man. They stop trading time for money. They make their money work for them. And they give as much value to people as they can. And so I learned that as I got older, that part really didn't make sense to me at the time. But the money working for you part, and I was like, what the hell? How do you make your money work for you? Again, all I know is how to go get money. So he said, wealthy people, first they get into stock, then they start a business, and then they get real estate. I took my time, I researched the Warren Buffett's and the Peter Lynch's, and I'm not gonna lie, in the beginning, that shit was like Chinese to me. Right, this is a foreign language. And so what happened to me was it started reminding me of being in the streets. Everything about it. And I heard this term one time that said, the real gangsters are on Wall Street. Once you know how something works, then you can get good at it. But mm -hmm. if you, and, and I really think the vast majority of humanity, and I don't care what class you're in, mm -hmm. the vast majority of humanity does not understand how the world works. Yep. Therefore, they are at the mercy of the world, and the people that figure out how it works can change things. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to understand how things work. And like, yeah, that's, that is to me what is so powerful about you. Mm -hmm. You understand a game that a lot of people that are disenfranchised understand, the streets. Mm -hmm. And you're saying, motherfuckers, this is just physics. <laughs> Let me show you the correlate <laughs> over here. It's all the same shit. Same. That's it. And so that's, that's important for me, the understanding the basics and the fundamentals. Like once you start understanding the fundamentals, you give yourself power. Because you now understand, like you said, you see how the machine works, right? And so most people look at the machine and marvel and say either, I'm, like most people look at the stock market, most 98% of the people who I know look at the stock market and say, yo, that's not a game I can play. I'm staying away from it. And so the way, the way it's set up is the world is set up, well, listen, cool, I don't even want you to play. Just give me your money, I'll play it for you. So when we look at like banks, like we understand that banks don't necessarily work in our favor, right? So banks only give us 0.05% interest on the money we have there. Well, we can get 8% just by putting our money in the index fund. So why would I just sit my money in the bank and let the bank make all the money? Because all they're going to do is invest the money in for you. So they're now operating as the plug. They operate now as the man who, I'm going to front you this. I'm going to make my money. I'm going to take the cut. I'm going to give you just enough to keep coming back. I'm going to go to the plug. Who is the plug? The stock market. Right? And so once I understood the fundamentals of like the most important thing too is we don't understand how money works. That's a whole different language in its own. The relationship with money in my community is you make money, just enough to pay bills. And so once you get tired of paying bills, you say, you know what? I need to treat myself to something, right? No matter if I gotta go in debt, no matter if I got, I need to treat myself to something to take this misery away. So you treat yourself to something that you can't afford at the time, right? But it makes you feel good in the moment. And so because it makes you feel good, you say, you know what? I'm living. This is a reprieve from everyday struggle. Let me get back on the hamster wheel. And so the sacrifice now becomes hard because now you're saying, I got to work, work, work and never get that reprieve. Hmm. I'm not willing to do that. Right? And so that's the mindset comes in and say, everybody around me had the same problem. No one represented the solution. So if I don't change something, I'm only going to end up like everybody else I know. 
Somebody has the solution somewhere. There's too many people out here living the life of their dreams that I'm watching. They know something I don't know. And the only thing that they had was access to a different type of information. So once I went and got the information, I now wanted to sing from the mountaintop, like, yo, look at this dope thing I found. Everybody can be a part of it. And then when I showed it to people, they was like, that ain't it, bro. I'm not about to do that. And so I realized how powerful it was for me to one, become economically like powerful in my mind. Because the thing about investing, especially in stocks, is that piece of ownership of everything that I use now makes me say, well, if I own that Apple, God, I don't care about buying an Apple. If I'm aware of Levi's and I'm aware of Timberlands, if I can own BFC Corp, then I own the stuff that I mine. I'm okay with that. Like that subtle shift in my mindset changed everything for me. Because now I was after just owning everything that I consumed. In the beginning, that was my introduction to the game. Let me just own everything I consume and then I'll feel okay. Owning a stock is like it's owning a percentage of a great business. And so when, once I understood that concept, I understood that the key to wealth is through ownership. Like that's what, that's, that was one of the things that made it click because I studied the wealthy people. The key to building wealth is not how much you can work. You can't work your way to wealth. You got to invest your way to And all wealthy people, black, white, Asian, Chinese, they own a whole bunch of shit. The people who aren't wealthy is because they don't own nothing. You only have your money sitting in cash. If your money is just sitting in cash, realistically, you're becoming poorer every day. Right. Or they own depreciating assets. And that's what cash is. It's a depreciating asset because the more money they print, the more money that money loses value. So if it's just sitting, it's the reason why the bank wants you to have your money there. So they can take it and use it and invest <laughs> it so much and be like, hey, it's just sitting, I'm going to give you 50 cents on whatever you had in there. And so the idea of ownership was, you know, we can just start owning everything. We, no matter if it's just a stock, like that's powerful. Because if you can start owning the businesses that you now consume every day, you turn a one-time transaction to a lifetime of profit. Because if I go to the store and buy a pair of Nikes, that's a one-time transaction. In order for me to get something from them again, I gotta come back and buy another pair of Nikes. But if I own the Nike stock, as long as I own it, it's a profitable um, vehicle for me. So that one-time transaction be can become a lifetime of profit if I own that business. And another great thing about the stock market is it makes me pay attention to the world. And so now I understand what's going on in the world. I started learning business cycles, market cycles. You know what I'm saying? Like, because now I can understand, yo, this is okay. Things are going out of business. It's okay, we're, we're in this cycle. Okay, people are hiring. Okay, we're in expansion cycle. And so now I started to take, I took an economic class on my own without just understanding the world. And so you start understanding when something is happening in China. Okay, something happening in China. So I own Apple. Apple is, has 20% of their revenue in China. Okay, they might take a little hit right now. What do you say to people that don't think they have enough money to invest? <sighs> so the important thing for me to tell them is start where you are. You build a mansion, you build an empire, you build it brick by brick. Like you start with $25. If you can do $25 a month, that's cool. If you can do $25 a week, that's cool. But what happens is, once you start understanding the power of how your money works, you start saying, yo, I don't need to do that because that's taken away from this. Let me, that $25 will now become $50. Guaranteed. That $50 will now become $100 because you're going to start doing more with less. The person who works out and sees that they drop 10 pounds in two weeks says, you know what, I'm gonna go a little harder because I know if I can drop 10, I can drop 20, right? I know if I can get, if I see one muscle shape up, I know it's possible. The word possible is so powerful. Possible changes the game. Instead of it being impossible, we now say I am possible or I'm possible. That changes the dynamic. So the first mindset is saying, invest in your first stock. It don't have to be a winner. It doesn't have to be a home run. It can be an AT&T stock that costs $26 right now. It may not be the best investment in the world, but you started, right? And the great thing about anything is you can't be great if you never go to practice. You can't hit 81 if you never get in the gym. So just get in the gym and then find somebody who can teach you. Be dedicated to understand the process. Warren Buffett said he reads 500 pages a day. We have to understand the power in learning and being educated, man.